My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss urea hydrolysis, also called a urease test. This is a biochemical test in which we're actually determining whether or not the bacteria has capacity to break down a molecule known as urea, which is shown here on the left. It turns out that an enzyme called urease is actually able to hydrolyze urea into carbon dioxide and two molecules of ammonia. Now, ammonia is a base, and it's actually able to elevate the pH of the solution. So therefore, if we want to test whether or not something is able to break down urea, we're going to actually put the bacteria and inoculate it heavily in a medium containing phenol red, which we actually described in the uh, triple sugar iron agar video. Okay, it's the same phenol red pH indicator. Now recall, whenever uh, in, for phenol red, whenever the pH drops, meaning it becomes more acidic, it will actually turn yellow. However, in the case of uh, the production of ammonia, which is a base or more alkaline, when the solution gets more alkaline and the pH rises, the phenol red will actually turn hot pink, which you can actually see in the middle right here. Okay, so if we have a bacteria that's actually able to produce urease and break down urea, we're going to have increased production of ammonia, an elevated pH of the solution, and we should see the phenol red actually turn hot pink. Now, of course, we also have to add urea, but if we add the urea and it contains urease, we'll see more ammonia, elevated pH, and we'll see this hot pink color. Now, the theory behind the urease test is actually relatively simple increased ammonia production from the urea, elevated pH, and our phenol red turns hot pink. However, the urease test is actually very clinically relevant and important. In one of the previous videos, we looked at triple sugar iron, or TSI test. And we said that in the TSI test, we had lactose non-fermenters, okay? When we looked at lactose non-fermenters, we mentioned that examples of those were Salmonella and Shigella, which happened to be gram-negative bacilli and also potentially pathogenic bacteria. So I'll repeat that. So Salmonella and Shigella are lactose non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli. Okay? Another gram-negative bacillus is Proteus. And they also happen to be lactose non-fermenters. So we've got three lactose non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Proteus is not usually pathogenic, so how can we distinguish between Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus? Well, it turns out that only Proteus expresses the enzyme urease. So if we add Proteus with urea and do this urea test, only Proteus is actually going to produce ammonia. Therefore, out of these three bacteria, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus, if we have Proteus and we do the urea test, we should see this hot pink color. Because Proteus expresses urease, therefore we get ammonia, elevated pH, and phenol red turns hot pink. Okay? If we did the same test with either Salmonella or Shigella, we would see no production of ammonia and therefore it would retain this yellow color. Okay, so in short, the urea test is actually able to distinguish between Salmonella and Shigella and Proteus. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Uh, make sure to watch the demonstration video on this. Thank you.